Hello, and welcome to the first Dookie Forge video. And as you can probably see, there's no forge. There's a lot of things going on, but no forging or blacksmithing to be seen. And this being the first video, there really won't be any forging. Uh, that's because there's a lot of limitations and issues that I have with the blacksmithing art that I'm going to be trying to learn. And what this first video is going to be attempting to capture is how I solve these problems. So as you can see, one of the issues is that I am in the penthouse studio apartment of the building that I live in, in uh, downtown of a major city. And that brings a lot of problems along with trying to learn something like blacksmithing. We, I have size limitations, weight limitations, uh, noise limitations, uh, power limitations, dust, debris limitations, um, and <clears throat> blacksmithing isn't really known to be quiet or clean or, you know, all of those things that are limiting me right now. And normally that would stop most people and uh, it should stop me, but I'm a weirdo and I'm going to basically attempt to solve all of those limitations. And on top of the physical limitations of my location and where I am in the penthouse studio apartment, <clears throat> I also don't have any tools because I'm in a penthouse studio apartment. And so I don't have any tools. The only tool I could find is this trusty screwdriver. It's a flathead, so it's not even the good kind. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. So I have a lot of limitations, for lack of any better way to put it. Uh, and this is the first video of my attempt in attempt at solving those limitations, not solving the limitations, but getting around them in a creative way to actually allow myself to learn how to blacksmith on my own. Uh, also, not even, that's not even, there's other limitations, like there's no shops near me, there's no, I don't have a yard, uh, you know, it, the list goes on. So after I thought on it for a while and I, I looked at all my issues and things that I'd have to get around, um, I think I came up with a plausible solution and I started to design out some ideas. So let me show you that right now. I started the design with just a simple uh, scale of, uh, of the cart that I was looking at online. I got the dimensions and I kind of made a a rough version of that. Now none of the things I'm building here are mathematically to scale, but they are within uh, enough scale to say would be within an inch, half an inch uh, of real life. So it's just uh, to kind of help me work through my thoughts and concept different ideas. So I started with the cart and I, I got uh, a rough version of an anvil and a vise kind of put it in the rough ideas positions. I also got a little forge there and a propane tank to see how everything fits and see how everything kind of, uh, you know, how much room roughly the things take up. And one of the, uh, I'm starting to build here the, the stand that uh, stands, the fold out stands that will, it, the idea is to transfer the impact of the hammer blows to the ground instead of through the cart. So I wanted them to be on uh, essentially fold out arms with feet that extended to the ground that li would lift up the cart just a little bit so that any uh, impact would go to the ground instead of through the cart. And as you saw, my original idea was to have kind of a car jack, a screw jack at the bottom, and that really wasn't ideal. So you'll, you'll see that change uh, quickly. And one of the other ideas I had was originally I was going to frame out this whole thing with aluminum extrusions 
Uh, but they are a little bit harder to work with as I don't have really any tools and they're a little bit more expensive as well as, well, they aren't as good with impact and, um, you know, vibrations. So I will be changing that, but the initial design stays the same. Uh, right now I'm, I'm framing out what uh, I want underneath the cart is a, a big old pegboard uh, to hold the uh, tools and things like that. And I have buckets here and fire extinguisher and all sorts of other stuff just to kind of see what I can fit in the bottom. Cause the idea I'm going to have is I want, you know, quenching oil. I want some water. I want some sand or something in different various containers under there as long as well as a fire extinguisher, propane, little torches and stuff like that. Uh, and then I just placed some tools on the, the, pegboard just to kind of get a, a rough scale idea of everything. And uh, here's where I started changing the idea and switching everything over to simple angle iron and um, getting rid of the aluminum extrusions, which ultimately changing, getting rid of the aluminum extrusions simplified the design a lot. And I ended up switching this over to like a square pipe as well as finding some uh, trailer jacks that I'm gonna use for the feet. Now, the ones I found had an angle to them, uh, and that's not ideal because the, the, it won't transfer any impact or the, the weight of impact directly to the ground as, as well. But those are just the first ones I found. I'm still looking for some straight, uh, essentially trailer jack type feet in order to put under the vise and the anvil. Uh, one of the cool things about this is the arms that hold the vise and the anvil can rotate essentially over 180 degrees of, off the corner. And so uh, some might wonder why I didn't mount like the vise and the anvil directly to the cart, other than I didn't want to send vibrations through the cart itself. And uh, the um, I wanted to be able to walk around the anvil and gain, gain access to all the sides of it while still kind of making this cart an all-in-one package and uh, you know easy to roll around where I don't have to I don't have to set up the anvil or anything but I can still have access to all the different sides and angles and things like that and so this is kind of my idea that I'm going to go with. I uh, don't know how well it's going to work, but this is the concept and well, time to order the cart and hopefully some other stuff along the way. This should be fun. So I'm back. It's been a couple weeks and yes, I am wearing the same clothes as I was before. As I said, I am in a penthouse studio apartment, so things are going really well, you know. Um, but after a couple weeks of thinking things through and, you know, looking at the design, I uh, finally received a foundational, the foundational item that we needed to kind of get this thing started, this weird idea, and here it is. This thing is a one of three created in the world. I got it. I know a guy. I got it custom made. And it is a steel and diamond composition. So made with real bits of diamond. So you know it's good. It has the weight capacity of 14 million freedom units. And uh, yeah gonna work out pretty well I think the only the only thing that immediately needs changed on this prime piece of steel is these little puppies right down here they are too small obviously and a little too narrow to be pushing around uh, a little bit of weight uh, and um, they'll sink into the earth a little bit if I you know go over the grass and all that stuff so I will be replacing these guys as soon as I get the wheels 
2,000 years later. All right. Well, 27 years later, we are back, and I'm still in the same clothes. Um, but they are washed this time, so it's a little bit better. Uh, we have gotten the wheels, finally, and these guys are nice. Check them out. Blah, blah, blah. They are six inch, heavy duty, uh, semi-pneumatic tires for the cart and the rubber actually I know a guy another guy and uh, we clear cut most of the Amazon rainforest looking for just the right rubber tree for these tires because I want them to last you know and hopefully I don't need bigger tires these are six inchers I might need eight inch and uh, unfortunately I am out of you know the Amazon you know out of rubber trees so I might have to find another solution but I think these guys will work and uh, really help distribute the weight when I'm going over grass or anything soft and just roll over bumps and uh, things a little bit smoother and well with my trusty screwdriver it's time to uh, put these things on This episode of Dookie Forge is not brought to you by Good Sense Pumpkin Seeds, roasted and salted. You see, here at Good Sense, we take care when handling, packaging, and storing our workforce, so they're always fresh. Fresh workforce, fresh product. You can rest assured that each and every seed is treated fairly. Every seed is precious, after all. We only employ the best organic grass-fed children in our production lines. We find their small hands and soft skin gives the best results when trying not to damage our seed. For an unknown amount of time, you won't save when you use the code DOKIKIDS at checkout. Good sense. It just makes sense. Get these things off of there, screwdriver. All right, this thing does weigh 250 pounds by itself. So me being such a strong strapping man, I'm going to have no problems with it. And I'm not gonna damage anything in my apartment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna damage something. All right, this is going to be no shoes on. Let's do it. <sighs> Smooth as a baby's bottom. All right. Let's, uh, let's get these bad boys off and replace them with a... Uh, much better set of wheels. Might take a little while, but I will see you guys when I get this thing uh, replaced. Well, looks like I got the first one here. Need two hands. Hold on one second. There we go, trusty screw, as I break my floor, trusty screwdriver, gets them every time, who would have known, flathead, so useful, these bolts out of here, there we go, last one, the cart is now shoeless, get two hands for this, there we go. Last of the wheels off. Thanks, little buddy. Put me in my uh, super expensive single light, one in the world. Nobody else has one like this, but uh, it's my only light. Uh, I have my wheels laid out here, and I am curious to see if these uh, bigger plates actually fit on 
the cart because there were additional holes already uh, put on the frame. So let's take a gander. They're about 50 pounds each wheel and no sweat. I'm just holding it with one hand. Uh, looks like that hole kind of lines up. If I lift it up, it might actually, looks like on the innermost sides of the slots, that'll fit. Look at that. Look at that. And screwdriver won't have to uh, make new holes. I'm going to measure these things and go to the hardware store and try to get some bolts and maybe another screwdriver or so, or two, maybe three, just to handle all this hole making and stuff. So I'll be back with bolts. All right, so as you can see, I'm back from the hardware store with my campfire lighting going. And I got some bolts and uh, nuts and washers. You can't get one without the other. And as it turns out, a screwdriver is good for a lot of things, but not for measuring, it turns out. And that is, let me grab one of these guys. And that is proven because we got these nice bolts, real strong, looking good, and they don't fit. So I'm not going to return these because I'm a man. And instead, this guy. I'm going to start making these holes bigger to uh, allow for these bolts to make it through. Just like that. Six and a half hours later. Uh, <sighs> First hole down. Uh, it's been six or seven hours, but getting there. See all the, I don't know if you can see it, but. All the metal chunks. Screwdriver's doing work. I got a bunch more to go. Almost there. Whew. That was a long time. That was six or seven days. Trusty screwdriver made it through. Let's, uh, let's take a gander. Here we go, we got our larger holes. Should be much better and let's test it out. Moment of truth, I haven't even tested it yet. Bada boom, perfect. This little guy did wonders. So, uh, next thing is I'm gonna get these things on there. Which, when you think of it, it's going to be pretty difficult. Let me show you why. So these holes back here are fine, but getting the screwdriver back here, you know, inside this channel to then tighten the bolt on the other side is going to be a little difficult. Alrighty. I'm going to try to flip this thing over again, which is probably going to hurt myself. I mean, nah, nah, I would never hurt myself. I am far too manly not to do that. All right, let's try to flip this guy over without hurting myself. Well, at least I'll catch it on camera. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. 
Not as bad as I originally thought. All right, I'm regretting this whole no shoes thing. Ah. All right, whew. There we go. Right on its back. Or on its top, whatever. All right, so now I have a little bit easier access to all the bolts and I don't have to hold the wheel at the same time. So let's give this a shot and see. Oh yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Finally got, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, finally got the nut and washer on the ends of those bolts back there. Took me two or three hours. Bada boom. Best $5 purchase. And we're going to tighten these on. I will see you with the uh, finished result. It's going to be great. All right, I'm back. It's been a little while. It's been about 27 days uh, since I last recorded, and uh, but we got it done. Uh, Mama has some new legs, and thanks to Mr. Trusty Screwdriver, so let's show them off. Bam! Oh, I, I don't have any music to put on, so I was thinking I'm just gonna make my own. So I'm gonna. Anyway, these uh, rainforest rubber wheels should really help the whole project out in the long run. Um, this is just the beginning though, and uh, I have a long way to go. But one of the nice things, batteries just died. Anyway, but one of the nice things about this whole thing is I got not only better wheels, but some brakes. So that should help out in the long run with uh, once I have the forging equipment mounted to this bad mamma jamma. All right. When it just starts going, it just starts going. All right. Let's get it hopefully up on us to its wheels. Ah, well, that one brake already came in handy. That's for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that is really nice. Got a little taller as well, so it's right there, right below waist, which is perfect. I think this thing, I think this thing is gonna work out. So, 
It might be even longer. Um, I guess I should go, whatever, lighting. Don't know my lighting yet. Uh, it might be a little longer till next time I record because now it gets to the point where I have to start getting some angle iron, some more uh, raw materials to actually start framing this thing out and building the stands and uh, all the other odds and ends. So that might, uh, depending on delivery delays or anything like that, it might take a little while, 24, 48 years or so. And, um, but yeah, it'll be worth it. This is awesome. Hey, who's that Quotamon? Nat Damon!